Hey guys, welcome. Welcome everyone. I'll give everyone another minute to join us and then we're gonna start. In the meantime, just make sure you have all the supplies needed and we're gonna go through that in a second as well. Just gonna give everyone another minute to join us. Hi. Alrighty, I see quite a few people here. So uh, let's start and hopefully if anyone was still hoping to join us live versus watching from the video. Hopefully they can join us shortly before we get too far in. But guys, if this is your first time painting with us, I just wanna mention that the video is gonna remain right here. So you can come back and do it anytime. We don't remove our videos. Uh, so if today is not the day, today maybe you just wanna watch or more be, maybe even partially watch or um, maybe start, but you're not gonna be able to finish, that's okay. You can come back anytime and just finish this project at your convenience. All right, so let's go through our supplies. First thing you're going to need is a canvas. I am using a fairly small canvas. As you can see, this is eight by 10 inch. So it's not very large. Um, my instructions are not size specific, so you're more than welcome to use absolutely any size canvas. Whatever size canvas works for you, that's totally fine. Use that. We're going to need a couple different brushes. We always recommend having large, medium, and small because I find that it's easier to do larger areas such as background um, with a larger brush, medium areas such as trees with a medium brush, and a small brush you're only going to need for smaller elements such as maybe some of the fine trees and some of the stars. So not many, but it's always good to have at least three. If you don't have three, that's okay. Use whatever you have, but we always recommend having at least three. Now, as far as the shape and the actual size of the brushes, it doesn't really matter. Go according to the size of your canvas. So for my canvas, um, I think I'm gonna use, let's say this one for my large, this one for my medium, this one for my small. So I'm gonna use large rounded brush, medium square brush, and a small pointy brush. Now, it doesn't really matter these two brushes, what, sh what um, shape they are. You can do both square or both rounded, it's not gonna affect your painting. But for the small brush, we always recommend having brush with a really pointy tip. So that's important. All right, plus of course, we're gonna need water and a paper towel or reusable fabric cloth, whatever you guys prefer, to dab our brushes on. And of course, some paint. For paint, we always use, if you painted with us before, we always use primary colors only which is yellow, blue, red, plus black and white, and we'll be mixing them into all the shades that you can see on this painting. However, if you're not a big fan of mixing, that's totally fine. You can use uh, pre-mixed colors. I would say any colors of your choice, as long as they go well with Aurora kind of color scheme. So any light yellows, light blues, some teals maybe, some pinks, um, some darker purples, darker blues, Whatever you have from this bluey, greeny, purpley color scheme, you're more than welcome to use, plus of course, black and white. And another thing we're gonna need for this particular painting today is a pencil, because we're going to start with the sketch. So the first thing we're actually going to do here is we're gonna take our pencil, just regular HP pencil, <coughs> excuse me guys. And we're going to sketch a couple things. We're not gonna be sketching many things, but there are a few things that we would like to sketch before we get in, into the painting. So what I would like to sketch is, I would like to sketch my snow. That's pretty much it. And I would say, um, I'm gonna position this. If this is the middle of my canvas, 
See, it's a bit lower. So I would say the side started about middle part. So at around, oh, the air in this room is so dry. I need a sip of something, sorry guys. All right, so do you see on the sides, I would say it's around middle part, maybe a little bit lower than a middle. And here it goes a bit lower than that as well. So it's just gonna be two hills going down here. And the same pretty much from the bottom. They can be the same, like for example, the height of this one can, one can be higher, one can be lower, or they can be exact same. It's entirely up to you. All right. So that's my snow. And if you want to add those lines, you can. Um, they're not right in the middle. This one is a little lower. This one is a little higher. But again, that is very optional because they're so easy to add later on as well. All right, and that's the only thing that we needed for our sketching. So what we're gonna move on to now is we're gonna add our background and we're gonna add it in a couple different layers. So we're gonna start with a base layer that's just gonna be blue and it's going to be light yellow. Once that base layer is done, then we're going to add all the other shades over that. So I usually start with my light yellow. I'm going to take my palette. I'm actually going to move everything a little bit so you can see both paintings but also color mixing. So I'm going to take some of my yellow, scoop it, sorry, some of my white, scoop it on the side. I'll add a little bit of yellow, make it nice, light, pastel yellow. And with this, I'm going to add our beautiful Aurora glowing lines. Now you can make them the same shape as mine or completely different. I like starting with this sort of middle one. It's not right in the middle, it starts a bit on the right and it curves a bit towards the left. So just start it somewhere. You will get a chance to edit it and change the shape if you wish later as well. And make it a little bit bigger than what you want to see in the end. Because the other colors such as blue and all the rest, we're going to overlap. So you want to make all those starter light colors a little bit bigger. Because we will be eating into them with our different colors here. So keep that in mind and make them just a touch larger. And you would, what you would like to see in the end. See, I started with those. And right away, I'm going to add the mirror reflection on the bottom. It doesn't have to be like a 100% mirrored copy. Because the bottom piece is so small, you can't really tell if it's the exact mirrored copy or not. So just something similar. And then right away, I'm going to move to the rest of my background. So I'm going to start by taking some white and some blue, mixing them up. And with this, I would say like a medium light blue. I'm going to go around here. So you see I'm adding it fairly close to my lines. I'm not going to blend it just yet. I'll show you in a second. So I'm just almost like covering the in-between parts.
And now that I have this on the top, now I'm gonna start blending. So with whatever little bit of paint that I have left on my brush, I might even um, dry up my brush a bit more to have even less left on a brush. I'm gonna start dry brushing the area where the two colors come in contact. You see, I'm emptying my brush as much as I can from paint, and then I'm dry brushing it. Do you remember I told you it's gonna eat into this yellow? Don't you expect that? And if you find that your brush picks up too much paint, like for me, do you see just drying it up is enough, but also you can actually wash it and then dry it up on a paper towel if you find that's working better for you. And you have to do this pretty fast too before your paint fully dries. Because once it fully dries, you're not gonna be able to do this technique anymore. So this is more of a technique that needs to be done kinda ASAP without taking any breaks. And don't worry if you lost some of the yellow, we'll add it in other layers too. This is just the beginning, so you will have, as I, to as I told you, as I mentioned earlier, you will be able to a bit edit it later. So this is just the start, this is our underlay in a way. All right, this top looks great, so I'm gonna do the same on the bottom now. I'll take some of this medium-ish light blue, and I'm gonna add some on the bottom. And then I'm gonna add it that right away. I'm gonna blend it right away here. If you find that your yellow paint is drier, which you could do, um, wash off your brush, make sure it's nice and clean, dab it off on a paper towel to get rid of extra water, and just use a little bit of that water that's left on it to soften up the paint, and go ahead and do the same that we've done. The upper part, so basically blend them. All right, I'm gonna make a little bit more of this medium light blue and I'm just gonna add it on to the sides again. Right here. And then I'm gonna take straight up dark blue, so not mixed with anything. And the rest, I'm just gonna finish with that straight up dark blue. And if you want to, you can blend right away here. It doesn't really matter. All right, and I'll do the same on the bottom. So I'll just finish up with my dark blue here.
And that's pretty much our base. So now we have to wait until our first layer dries up a little bit. And then we're gonna proceed with uh, more layers on a background because we can't really move much further until our background is dry. So we just have to continue working on our background. So my paint dries pretty fast, I would say. I don't think I will need to um, use the blow dryer, but if your paint is a bit more slower drying paint, you definitely can blow dry it. Um, or if you're working from the video, or if let's say you're totally not in rush and you wanna take your time, you can naturally let it dry. And then you can, again, do it from the video because on the video there's an option that you can pause it always. Um, and rewind it, but even as we're live, you can actually scroll a little bit backwards and rewatch certain segments. So that's an option too. Um, and next, what we're gonna work on, there is a darker blue. So we're gonna make, I'm just gonna go through them in not particular order, in no particular order, but we will be making a darker blue. It may be even with a tint of purple and darkening up sides even more. We'll be making this pinky purple color and flicking it a little bit. Um, we will be adding a bit more light yellow and some white and pink optionally. If you want to, you can add some light pink too. Honestly, any shades. For me personally, as you can see, even while I was doing this, this created a really nice greens. There's some nice teals in there. So those are the colors I personally don't really have to mix because they're already naturally present here. Um, if those colors, let's say, didn't naturally happen for you, you could mix them and just brush them on. Because those are important, they're really pretty, but again, I already have them. So there's no real need for me um, to add them additionally. All right, so my blue, dark blue, is still pretty wet, but what is a bit drier for me is this middle parts, right? So I can start working on the middle parts, and I can start by um, taking a little bit off. Well, I'll have to make all the colors anyway. So let's start with some lighter, light yellow again. And you can use either medium brush or the large brush for this, but you see I'm making it extremely light this time. Just gonna super lightly dry brush it right in the middle here to lighten up that part. See, it adds more, way more glow to it. And glow is what we are after here. Same with the bottom. Then I'm gonna go with my light pink. So I'm gonna take some red, some white, mix them up. Here's my light pink. It's very lightly, again, dry brush technique. So basically bare minimum of paint on your brush. And with that bare minimum of paint, we just slightly scrape it over the surface of our canvas, so bare, bare minimum of paint, and you add it with a very light touch. Added some there, some here, maybe I'll add a little bit right here. But notice my background is pretty dry, so my paint is not mixing with the previous layers. 
If you notice that your paint is mixing too much with whatever you already have, that means you just your canvas is still too wet for you to continue working on it. So I would say either again, grab a blow dryer and just blow dry it or give it a couple more minutes. Whichever you prefer. I'll add a bit of the same on the bottom. Right now I'm gonna make a darker, darker color, but it's not dark overall, it's like light pinky purple. So I start with the same red, which in my case, this is more of a magenta based color. So it's more like a dark purple than red. <coughs> Sorry, dark pink than red. Then I'm gonna take the tiny smidge of blue, add it in, and then I'm gonna add in some white as well. So you see it happens um, to turn into like a red-ish, pink-ish, purple color. So it's something between magenta and purple, and it's not dark, but it's not crazy light either. It's like medium. And with this, I'm gonna go a little bit right here. Again, the same kind of dry brush technique. Let's see which lamp I can move to remove that glare. And maybe a little bit right here as well. Again, nice and light. Let's dry brush it on. And of course, on the bottom. All right, let's see. Maybe a little bit more here. That looks pretty good. Now I think I'm going to move to that darker color. So it's going to be uh, something between mi mixed between blue and purple. So I'm just going to take my blue as a base. I'll add some red, which is definitely going to add purple undertone. You see it kind of looks almost super dark, almost like black on my palette, but if I take it more transparent, it definitely isn't black. There's zero black in it, just because it's so dark and concentrated, it looks almost like black. So this is the color I'm going to be using. It's just literally base um, blue and red. And with this, I'm going to darken up my hands here a little bit.
Let me brush in a little bit right here. And I may need to soften it up with just water. So I'm gonna wash my brush, dab it off in a paper towel, and I'm gonna go ahead and just water blend it in a way. Using just straight water, just soften it up a little bit. And then I'll add a bit more of that color and I'm going to this here. All right, this looks pretty good. I think the only color that I would like to add to this would be white, and I'm gonna use my medium brush for that. So I'm gonna take my medium brush, just a little bit of white, because again, I'm gonna work on a dry brush technique. So I'm only gonna need a tiny, tiny smidge of white. You can even dab it off on a paper towel if you feel like you've got too much paint. And then go ahead and add it in any areas you want to give extra glow to. And of course, whatever color that you feel like is still missing, which you would like to add, you're more than welcome to. So for example, if, uh, do you remember how we started with that light yellow? If you feel like you maybe lost all your light yellow, you absolutely can add it now. Um, or if you lost all that beautiful teal that happened while we're mixing, you can add that now as well. So whatever color you feel like potentially got missing. So for me, maybe it's a little bit of pink. Or any color that you just would like personally to have a bit more of. You can make it again and just add it. Because again, while through all this layering, sometimes colors get lost. We add them again. All right, that is looking pretty good to me. So I think I'm going to stop personally. I think it looks fine. I'm going to give you guys a minute to those of you who are trying to keep up. Um, and then a majority of you guys just watching live and then painting from the video because of those pause pause options that are awesome and super super help super helpful. But to anyone who would like to. Um, take a minute to catch up. No problem. I'll give you guys a couple of minutes here to finalize our top before we move to our snow and then our trees because that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do our snow next. 
And once our snow is done, then I'm going to move on the trees. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in chat. I am happy to answer all of them for you. All right, no questions so far. That's good. It's very good. And guys, after you're done, feel free to share your results with us. We always love to see how they turned out. Um, I will make sure there's a link in the description of this video to where you can share your results. We have a group on Facebook that we always love um, for people to share their results in specifically created for that, for people, for everyone to share the results. We have them all in one place, so we feel like, you know, we're doing this all together. So feel free to do that, but no pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna move to my snow then. And I'm just gonna take my medium brush and I'll start by lightly covering up everything that needs to be white with white. So basically, because I was not very careful around here, I was a little messy, intentionally, not accidentally really. So I'm just going to start by zoning everything with white. And I'm not adding like a thick layer there because I'm going to be adding um, other colors right away. So I'm adding a fairly thin layer of white. So it doesn't take forever to dry. And then right away, I'm going to start adding all the other colors and all the colors present around it are going to go on the snow as well. Because snow is just nice, light, white, fluffy snow is very reflective. So it's going to reflect, um, it's going to pick up all the colors around it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add all the colors around it. I'm going to start, but because now we're not working with mixing, all those yellows and greens that happened, we're going to actually need to mix them. So I'm going to start by maybe taking a little bit of, making a little bit of light green. So I'm going to take some white on the side and take some yellow. And just a tiny smidge of blue. You don't need much. You really need the tiniest little drop of blue in there. We go, we have light yellow. So light yellow, and you can use a small brush for that even if you want. But I'm using my medium one. I'm using just the top edge so my lines, my lines are not too thick. It's right here. A little bit right here. Just a little bit everywhere. And I'm gonna wash my brush. I take some light blue. So just take some white on the side again. Add a little bit of blue to it. There we go, I have a nice light blue. 
move a little bit of light blue to you. We'll go a little bit heavier here. And we'll make the touch darker there. All right, then I'm going to make some purple. So again, I'm going to start with red. Take some red on the side. Take a little bit of blue, mix them up, and then add a little bit of white. You see, this looks like a nice purple. And while everything is still wet, I'll take some of that. I'll add it in, and in certain areas, it's going to be more blended. Another area is less blended. And I add some on the bottom here, a little heavier. All right, and now I'm going to wash my brush, dab it off in a paper towel, and I'm going to blend my purple a bit more. This purple is a bit of a darker color. You may need a bit of extra blending to connect it properly to my lighter colors. And if you need to take some white for blending, that's okay too. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take some black as well. So I know black is a tricky color, but I will. I'll go for it. And I'm going to start by adding it right underneath here. I'm still using my medium brush, but if you prefer, you can use small one too. It really depends how small is your medium and how big is your canvas. So for me, either small or medium are good for the size of my canvas. To see I added a line all underneath, I might just lightly merge it into the snow. Not like crazy, I'm not trying to blend it, but in certain areas I would like it to be, especially on the sides here, I'd like it to be maybe a little bit more, um, have like a softer merging versus just being a line that's under. See, I'm slightly blending it on the sides. But I'm not blending it all around. And then from that line, I'm going to start adding lines down. So flicks from there down, longer flicks on the sides, and shorter flicks as I go towards the middle. With the very middle being the shortest ones. Now, what's important about those flicks, you do want to have a variety. You don't want them to be all just the same. You want to have some shorter, some longer. You want to have that almost like a zigzaggy variety. And also, all of them should start at that line. So, right at the line, it needs to be very solid. And you do want them to be overall getting longer as you go closer to the sides. So this side is done, and then I'm going to move on to the other side.
And of course, all those lines need to remain completely vertical. You don't have them one way or the other, all very vertical, no matter how much you might wanna put them a little bit on the side because of the curved lines in between, they all should remain vertical. All right, so do you see, that's my bottom. We can go in and just a touch of black here. And just a bit more right here. And then I'm gonna go on the top. <coughs> Actually, yeah, maybe even a bit more right here. All right. And then I'm gonna do something very similar to the bottom, but way shorter. So I'm not going with a tall lines at all. All the flicks are remaining short here. For this side, yeah, they, they can still gradually get a little bit taller as you go towards the sides, but not as tall, because we're gonna be adding actual trees there. So there's no need for any flicks to be super tall. All right, and now I can finish up my snow a bit here because I'm still not done. Um, I'm gonna add light yellow. So I washed off my brush, I dubbed it off on a paper towel to make sure it's really nice and clean. No black left. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of white, add some yellow to it. And with a tiny smidge, oh, 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 oh never mind. Got some blue into it, let's do it again. Take some white, add some yellow. With a little bit of this light yellow, I'm gonna add some, almost like a glowing parts. Just so that yellow reflection. And the only other color that I'm missing here is light pink, so. I'm gonna add some light pink and then I'll clean up with the white because as we're adding all of those colors, it can happen that you lose all your white and then if you feel like it's just a colorful mess, it doesn't look like a snow. So we'll add some white to it too. But first I'm gonna add some pink. So again, I'm gonna take some white on the side, a little bit of red, make any pink, but I would generally recommend keeping it on the lighter side. So I'm making light pink here. All right. Now I'm gonna take some white and I'll finish up with adding actual white.
All right, so maybe it's no, a bit of white snow wherever if you like, maybe lost some, just wherever you feel like you want more. And of course, if you feel like there's certain colors that you would like to add more in your snow, go back to them. So for example, for me, I could, I feel like I could add a bit more green somewhere right here. So I could do that. And you can use that at any point, again, either medium or small brush, whichever seems more fit in a certain area. So for example, right here, because it's such a small area, and I already have everything laid out, I'm just adding what I think is missing. I'm gonna add a small brush. Uh, maybe a little bit more purple somewhere. Let's see, maybe I'll add some more purple right here. So again, I'm gonna do this with a small brush just because it's an additional colors. I don't need them and they're all they are they already there. I just want to have a little bit more of them. All right, then that's my snow. I'm quite happy with this. So what is left for us overall is our treats and then some reflection and a couple of stars. So <coughs> next thing I'm gonna focus on is going to be trees. And what I usually like doing is I like laying out my tree trunks before I turn them into trees. Because I like to know where they're gonna be positioned, how tall they're going to be, how many of them are going to be before I turn them into trees. So you can do your tree trunks with, again, either small brush or medium brush if your medium has a top edge. So for example, like my brush, because it's a square brush, I can use it this way to create wide lines, or you can use just the top of a brush to create a fine lines. So this is pretty much what I will be using for my tree trunks, because it gives you the same line as a small brush. But, Unless your medium brush is capable of that, small brush is your best bet. And I usually like starting with my tallest tree. So I would say the tallest one is going to be on this side. You can position your trees completely different. That's totally fine too. Um, but for me, following the same pattern as the original, I would be making the tallest tree Somewhere right here, uh, somewhere on the right side, and it's gonna be pretty tall. So I'm gonna put tree trunk right in the middle where the tree is going to be, right in the middle of that tree, so you see. Then on the side of that, I'm gonna add two more trees, one smaller, one larger. So one larger one is gonna go into about here, and a smaller one into about here. So you have tree trunks. And then the rest of them are gonna be shorties. So I have four more shorties here. So next one is fairly close. And it's a pretty small one. And then the rest are super tiny. And a bit further. So you see, I have all my tree trunks lined up on this side. Now I'm gonna move on this side and I'll do the same. Except of course different heights. So the tallest one on the side is gonna be the one right by the edge, and it's gonna be definitely shorter than this one. So I'll put it maybe somewhere right here. It's, that looks like about right height. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Honestly, any number of trees, it doesn't have to be six. Just make sure there, there's a variety of sizes and they gradually get shorter as they go towards the middle overall. Doesn't mean every single following one has to be shorter than a previous one. There can be some, again, back and forth things, some shorter, taller, shorter, taller, but overall they should be decreasing in height. All right. That looks fine to me. 
And now I'm going to turn them all into the trees. And how I'm going to do this, I'm just going to dab with my medium brush in lines almost. And I'm using the top edge of my medium square brush. If you're using pointy brush, I'm actually going to show you how to do it with a pointy brush too. So let me start by doing it with a square brush. So I'm going to dab with just a corner on top. And then as I go lower, I'm going to start dabbing with the top edge. You see, almost like in lines. But the goal is to keep it much, much thicker, closer to the middle. And then as they get wider, the branches, I can give them angles. So now I can start angling it to the bottom left and bottom right instead of doing super straight. The bottom edge is straight for simplicity because there's such a small area. But as we get into a larger areas, we can definitely angle them a bit more. And you can either continue dabbing or you can do brush strokes. The goal with our trees, overall goal, is for all of our trees to have a very pointy triangular shape. So you want them to be like a very vertical triangles. The pointy tip and gradually getting wider. But you still want them to stay fairly thin because if they get wide really fast, you're not going to be able to fit too many trees, right? It's going to be just one tree or two trees top. So keep them as thin as you can while making them gradually wider as you go down. So that's how we would do them with a square brush. Now, let's say if I was using my small brush or a pointy medium brush, which tree is visible really well. Maybe this one, I'll show you on this one. You can sort of see this one. It's the same thing, except instead of dabbing, you're gonna do brush strokes. So you're gonna start with almost like a dot. And then as you go down, you're gonna be adding little flicks down on each side see from the tree trunk down and out down and out and go like that all the way to the bottom so it should merge with your black line on the bottom you don't want to see the tree bare tree trunk anywhere all should be merging into that black line on the bottom so down and out, down and out of the tree trunk. And then we're gonna turn all of those trees, all of those tree trunks into trees using either one of those techniques. I guess depending on your brush preference. You can always go over a tree trunk a couple more times if it's, let's say, we're using small brush and you realize that your tree trunk is still coming through as a line, like it's too visible, it's not fully covered. You can just go over it a couple times. That's not a problem. Or if, let's say, you were using medium brush and you realize that your tree tops are too um wide you can always switch to a small brush and do just the very tops with a small brush to give them a bit more of the pointy uh, top part
All right, and that's pretty much all of our trees. And do you see how all of them go to this line and merge into it? So you cannot tell where the trees begin, where the line begins. Everything merges into one. Now we're going to finish up with our white elements. So I'm going to start with the top and I'm just going to use my small brush here. I'm going to take a little bit of white and tip of my brush. And I'm going to make those smudgy ones. So put a dot. And dab, dab, dab it a little bit with my finger to give it a bit of a foggier or smudged look. We'll do that one more time. And maybe a couple smaller ones like that. see just a couple smudged ones and then I will add out of them stars so from this two and this little guy here I'm going to make them into stars so I'm going to put an actual dot and then from there a line up line down line left line right and same on the second one line up line down line left line right that's two stars there, and one star here. You can have more or less. It doesn't have to be just three specifically. You can have five, you can have more, you can have just one or two. That's totally fine. I'm going to add a couple more stars. This one I'm not going to be smudged. I'm just going to add some dots wherever you feel like. The only thing I would say, I personally prefer not to you know, evenly spread them around. I find that it looks better. And they're sort of in groups of some kind versus just evenly spread around the sky. But it could be just my personal preference. And optionally, if you want to, you can highlight your trees a little bit on the left side. So this would be super optional. You can just add. So on the left side for the right trees, on the right side for the left trees, if you want it. It doesn't really need it. It looks really good without it too. But if you want it, you can add a tiny little highlight to your trees on a side that's closer towards the middle. And then we're going to add the bottom. So for the bottom, I am going to add lots of really fine horizontal lines.
And maybe I'll add a couple of dots here and there as well. Reflection of my stars. Maybe just a couple you know, smaller little flicks for the reflection as well. And after that, I'm officially done. The only thing that's left for you here is to find a good spot and you can go ahead and you can sign it with your name or your initials or anything else that you would like to have. And ta-da! It is officially finished. Super fun, not too complicated. So I hope you guys enjoyed painting this one. And of course, feel free to work on it. I know we go a bit of a, a faster pace and the majority of people need to actually make this a much longer project by using the pause button. So feel free to do that. And whenever you guys done, please share it with us in a group. I'll make sure the link is included in the description of the video. We would love to see how they turned out because that's something we always look forward to. Um, at the tutorials and after tutorials. And many thanks to all of you guys who tipped us in advance, pre-tipped us, just based on the trust um, that we can do this and do a great job and that you will enjoy it when the tutorial comes. Really appreciate the support and the trust. And to those of you guys who made this along with me and if you like, yeah, that turned out really good and I'm happy and I do wanna say thank you, but I don't know how, you can do this um, through a tip link that is in the description of this video. You can send any tip, whatever you feel like. All tips are always greatly appreciated. Uh, or you can just leave a nice comment, whatever works for you. Alrighty guys, and feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Yeah, absolutely, at a later time is great. The video is gonna remain right here, so you can come back and do it anytime. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments here. Um, or if you require more immediate response, you can always email us or message us on Facebook. And also feel free to check out all the upcoming events that we have. You can do it through our website, which is also in the description of this video. Or uh, you can just go to our YouTube channel and you can look at the section for uh, upcoming live streams. And whatever piques your interest, you can just click notify me. And then it notifies you whenever we go live. And then, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you can always come back and do this anytime. All righty, guys, thanks for joining me. Looking forward to seeing some of your beautiful paintings. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. Bye.